Raoul Wallenberg rescued over 10,000 Jews from Nazi Germany to Sweden. But when the Second World War was over, Raoul was put to jail by the Soviet Union and disappeared. To this day, nobody knows what happened to him. Here is the full story of Raoul Wallenberg. Raoul was born in Lidingö, Stockholm on the 4th of August 1912. His father had previously died from stomach cancer, so the baby was raised by his mom and grandfather. The grandfather was a member of the ultra-wealthy family Wallenberg, who owned the greatest bank in Sweden and are now worth a staggering $275 billion. Because of his wealth, the grandfather had big ambitions for his grandson. When Raoul was an adult, his grandfather paid him the rare opportunity at the time to study in the US. Raoul would become an architect, but he also took the time to hitchhike around in the countryside and became very good at socializing with strangers. After graduation, he traveled all the way to Palestine to intern in a bank. He befriended many Jewish people who told him about Nazi Germany and their discrimination and kidnapping of Jews. When Raoul heard that, he felt immense sympathy for the Jews and wanted to stop this madness. But then in 1937, Raoul's grandfather died. Raoul also found out that his architect degree from the US was invalid in Sweden. Worst of all, his relatives Marcus and Jakob Wallenberg did not want him in the bank because he was too extroverted and quote, not like an ideal banker. Luckily, he got a job as a foreign director at the Central European Trading Company, who imported food and horses from Hungary. Soon he was about to leave the company and have a more impactful mission. Although Hungary was occupied by the Nazis in World War II, the 825,000 Jews who lived there were not deported to concentration camps compared to the rest of Germany. But between 1942 to 1944, Adolf Hitler forced Hungary to deport and eliminate 435,000 Jews. The Jews that weren't caught yet had to wear a yellow star and find themselves prisoned in a ghetto. When the West heard what happened, they were of course very angry. The US wanted to stop this as soon as possible and reached out to neutral countries, including Sweden. Together with the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs, they wanted to find a man they could travel to the capital of Hungary and save as many Jews as possible. Raoul Wallenberg, who regularly traveled to Budapest, had looked forward to this moment for years now and accepted the offer. The plan was to give the Jews protective passports that allowed them to be Swedish citizens. Thus they could travel to Sweden without being threatened by the Hungarians or the Germans. After being granted special immunity by the Swedish king, Raoul traveled to Budapest and met up with the diplomats Ivan Danielsson and Per Anger. Thanks to Raoul's negotiation skills, Hungary approved 4,500 of these special passports, although Raoul actually made over 13,000. The Germans also agreed to this, since they had almost lost the war at that point and wanted to be kinder to Sweden. As you can understand, the Swedish people became extremely popular among the Jews. Thousands of people flocked the embassy of Sweden where they got their passports. Raoul himself worked 16 hours every day and hired over 70 employees to help him with this. As more applications poured in, they even expanded to several buildings where they continued to give passports. Raoul enjoyed the time there, as he guided hundreds of Jews to the trains and shouted at the Nazi soldiers to leave these people alone. This support would soon end when the fascist party Arrow Cross took over Hungary with the help of the Nazis. These extremists ignored the special privileges the Swedish Jews had and started to shoot hundreds of them down the Donau River, causing wild panic of course. To make things worse, Raoul had met the German representative Adolf Eichmann, who hated him a lot. But Raoul was determined to save every Jew he could get. Even when his colleague Per Anger told him to seek safety, he said, quote, to me there's no other choice. I've accepted this assignment and I could never return to Stockholm without the knowledge that I've done everything in human power to save as many Jews as possible. 
So like an action hero, he continued to give passports even when he was threatened with machine guns. Raoul escaped many assassination attempts and even got one leader of the Arrow Cross to turn against his own people and leave the diplomats alone. This other chaos would soon end when the Soviets started to attack Budapest. After a particularly bloody fight, the Soviets captured the city while most of the Swedish Jews and all the Swedish diplomats were safe. In total, over 10,000 Jews have been saved from the Nazis. Because Raoul saw the Soviets as heroes, he wanted to collaborate with them in order to help even more Jews. When he met the Soviets who seemed quite friendly, something suspicious was in the air as they escorted him out of Budapest. The remaining Swedish diplomats along with the Jews were safely transported to Sweden without Raoul Wallenberg. The diplomats were told that Raoul was in good care and under protection from the Soviet Union, although the reality was much, much worse. Raoul Wallenberg was transported all the way to Moscow into the prison of Lubyanka. There he was stripped of his belongings, locked in a cold cell and got every single day porridge filled with mold and the soup pretty much consisting of water, all while suffering from hunger, stomach aches, cockroaches, boredom and despair. Why was the Swedish hero treated like that, you might ask? Well, the Soviets thought that Raoul Wallenberg was a spy, although there were no concrete evidence for it. They thought that he was acting for the US, which he did to some extent, since the whole rescue mission was financially supported by them. They also thought that Raoul was a spy of Germany too, given the fact that he got along very well with top German and Hungarian officials. One of Raoul's closest friends there had been a Soviet double agent all along and gave all the quote-unquote evidence that the soldiers needed. The Soviets didn't care about the Jews but really hated spies. Therefore, the Soviets were very harsh towards Raoul and moved him to several jails that were even more brutal than before. This is where the facts end and speculations begin. After World War II finally ended in 1945, Raoul's mom and stepdad urged the Swedish government to bring back Raoul or at least explain what happened to him. The Swedish government, led by Prime Minister Tage Lander and Foreign Minister Östen Undén, was quite fearful though. Tensions would soon rise between the US and the Soviet Union and the Soviets would be quite suspicious towards Sweden. Because of this, they wanted to delay asking them for as long as possible. One year later, the Swedish government did ask the Soviets who refused to tell anything about Wallenberg, but instead ordered several Baltic refugees to come back to the Soviet Union. When Sweden actually sent them over, they still refused to give a straight answer. Finally, the Swedish ambassador Staffan Söderblom got to meet the leader Joseph Stalin himself, who seemed very polite and promised Söderblom to give an answer very soon. But the answer didn't come. For the next 10 years, Sweden would continue asking the Soviets who didn't answer them. Lastly, the Prime Minister himself would personally visit Moscow and ask them. Raoul's mom, who was quite desperate at this point, wrote the following in a letter Erlande would carry, who translated to English reads like this. There is a room here waiting for you when you return with the Prime Minister. You understand how we all looked forward to the day when your suffering and our suffering will end and we can live together as in the good old days. You're always loving mommy and you're warmly accommodating daddy. When the Prime Minister arrived, the Soviets were more irritated now. They didn't think it was a big deal given that millions of their own people died in the war before, but they soon gave the following answer. Raoul had been accidentally shot in 1947 as he was moving between prison camps. The story seemed quite made up though and his family certainly did not believe in it. Later on, the Soviets told them that he in fact was alive but in a mental asylum. Ironically, the ambassador Sir de Blum had got a severe mental breakdown and just mumbling Wallenberg, Wallenberg to himself. 
But the Swedish people got tired of the story at this point, and Raoul's mom and stepdad were understandably very depressed. She thought that she had failed Raoul's biological dad when he told her in his deathbed to take care of their son. Both his parents died in 1979, while Raoul's half-siblings Guy from Dadel and Nina Lagergren promised to search for the lost brother. The US and the CIA wanted to rekindle the search for him. He was recognized as an honorary American citizen and an international hero. Several statues and memorials were built around the world. Given the increased support from the US, Raoul's siblings sued Soviet Union in international court for $39 million and were successful at that. But the Soviet Union just ignored the sentence, and the siblings were quite disappointed. Several decades later, Russia would admit that they were wrong in arresting Rav Wallenberg. They invited Rav's siblings to Lubyanka to tell them once and for all that Rav was dead. They brought his diplomatic passport, his phone book and some banknotes. Also from a journal note by a top official in their secret police KGB, Rav had been executed several decades ago. In 2016, Raoul was officially declared dead by the Swedish tax agency. I know it's very hard to see someone who did so good to the world meet such a tragic end. Although he had all the traits of courage, and social skills and negotiating, the whole situation made it quite impossible for him to do otherwise. Still, Raoul Wallenberg is celebrated around the world with the 27th of August as his day. His sister Nina also founded the Raoul Wallenberg Academy, who encourages young people to stand up for human rights. If impact and making the world a better place is something we all strive for in our lives, I think Raoul is a huge inspiration and an astonishing success, regardless of what happened to him.